Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew. Thanks to Jakari Jackson for actually sitting in and doing the live portion. We pre-recorded this interview a few hours earlier, and we're about to talk to Anthony Gucciardi. Uh, you may have known him from Natural Society. He's also started a new website called StoryLeak.com, and there's the story right there. Boston Runner details latest. Police must have known about bomb threat. And he spoke with Alastair Stevenson, the coach from University of Mobile, the cross-country coach who ran in the marathon, had just finished, and he thought it was weird that he saw police dogs and announcements over loudspeakers to be calm. It was just a drill. He saw people on the roofs. And then when we had Dan Badandi go to the press conference and ask about this, they said there was no sort of intelligence, nothing like that. So I guess they didn't technically lie to him. They just said there was no previous intelligence, they probably didn't want to admit that they had a drill going. But anyway, we turn now to Anthony Gucciardi. How are you doing today? Hey, thanks a lot for having me. Oh, I, I think what you did was great. How did you get a hold of Mr. Stevenson? And tell us about the interview. And actually, we're going to go to a clip of this in a second. But go ahead and tell us about how you were able to pull this off. Well, it took a while. I went on Google and pretty much searched him. He works at a university, University of Mobile in uh, Alabama. He's actually a very reputable coach, and I found out his number from one of the coaching websites. I gave him a call, and he just decided to call me back, despite the fact that we had mainstream media calling him. He had hundreds of messages, and he decided to call me back, and I said, I told him what was going on. I said, listen, they're saying that there was never a drill, that they had no intelligence whatsoever. And he was just, he was amazed at what was going on because his phone had been dead pretty much and he wasn't really connected with what was going on. He couldn't believe that they were denying it. So we did a, a short four minute interview and I told him, you know, what was going on. He said, great, let's, let's get the truth out there. And he felt pretty much betrayed by the mainstream media since they were completely ignoring him. And some of them are calling him crazy. Well, that's almost the kind of attack that they did with Kurt Haskell when he went out and said, hey, I saw a sharp-dressed man. They tried to say, no, there was no other person that helped this guy get on the plane. There's no security footage of it. Uh, well, we're not going to show you any security footage of it. And on and on. And this is what happens. There's one person who just, you know, because they're a good person, they speak out, and then they are immediately demonized and tried to, uh, tried to shut down. So what exactly did y'all talk about in the interview? Well, first of all, the, he had about two sentences in one Alabama.com website publication article where he's talking about they had some type of training exercise in the morning where they announced that there was a, a bomb training drill and there was bomb sniffing dogs and bomb squads and stuff like that. But I posted that and you posted it up at Infowars.com as well. And we were getting a lot of flack. They were saying, you know, you're lying. He didn't mean it like that. Oh, this was taken out of context. You know, yada, yada. You're a conspiracy theorist. So figured the only way was to actually contact him himself. As it turns out, we were 100% right. Actually, we were more right in the sense that it was worse than that. He said that in the very morning, there were not only bomb-sniffing dogs and bomb squads in heavy amounts, but there were rooftop people watching over that may have been snipers. And they might have been part of this private security firm we're going to talk about. But it was so heavily loaded that this guy, he's been to hundreds of marathons. I mean, this is a coach from a university that specializes in marathons, okay? This guy's been to, he told me he went to military marathons where they had less security. He's never seen anything like it in his whole life. And the key fact that he said, too, was not only has he never seen anything like it in his whole life from the bomb sniffing dogs and all the crazy training drills that they openly admitted to on the loudspeakers and told everyone at the tent early in the morning, but consider the fact that this is the only one that a bomb actually occurred. So the other ones, not only did they not have the bomb sniffing dogs and the bomb squads and everything like that, but none of the other ones actually had any bomb to go off. So the drill shows that something was going on. They either had a tip off or whatever. They're lying flat out and they don't want the public to know about it. Right, and right now what we're gonna do is go to this clip uh, from your interview. And then we also have a couple other clips. We have the press conference with, with, where Dan Badandi asked the police commissioner, hey, you know, there were loudspeakers. Why were they telling everybody to be calm before the bombs went off? Uh, you know, no, and they said they have no uh, intelligence based on that. They had no prior knowledge. So we're going to go to that clip right now, and then we'll come back and finish this interview. Uh, there were people on the roof with, with binoculars looking down onto the athlete's village at the start. Um, there was dogs uh, with their handlers going around sniffing. Um, for explosives, and, and we were told on a um, loud announcement that we shouldn't be concerned. This, this was just a drill. 
cross country coach Allie Stevenson had just crossed the finish line. She had come to see me at the finish and then we were walking back down towards the finish area. Then, right where his wife had been sitting. And all of a sudden we heard a loud explosion. They even made announcements on the loudspeaker about the increased security. They kept making announcements saying to the participants, do not worry. This is just a training exercise. Evidently, I don't believe they were just having a training exercise. I think they must have known. They must have had some kind of threat for position to hold in. They announced over the broadcasting system that this is a training exercise. So they openly said, this is a training exercise. This is a drill. Because there's people out there that are saying that the drill never existed. And many of them are actually policing that they never even did the training exercise. But this is for sure. You heard that over the, the broadcast system, didn't you? Yeah, absolutely. They did, they did run a drill at the start at the athlete's village, yes. Was there any play in the hollow drill? Because according to BostonGlobe.com, they said they were doing drills this morning for the same exact thing that happened, according to BostonGlobe.com. Now, was you guys given any warning ahead of time of this uh, taking place? As I said earlier, there was no specific intelligence. Uh, we certainly increased uh, posture around a big event like this. All of those things happened in preparation for this event, but there was no specific intelligence that anything was going to happen. If you take any questions. Oh, sir, why were loudspeakers telling people in the audience to be calm moments before the bomb went off. Is this another false flag stage attack to take our civil liberties and put more homeland security by sticking their hands down on the pants on the streets? No. Wow. And that was, uh, that was Dan Badandi there at the end, basically asking the questions that they did not want to answer. Those were not probably on the script that the rest of the mainstream media reporters got. And ask us these questions. Stay away from anything about a drill. We don't want to talk about the fact that we had bomb sniffing dogs and snipers and other things. Now, uh, we're going back to Anthony Gucciardi. Uh, tell us what else Alistair Stevenson said when you asked him, did he, because basically they're, the media is painting him as a kook, the only guy that saw this. Did he talk to other people? Did other people hear this? Yes. Now, the interesting thing here is that I've talked to other runners too. I've spoken to other runners. They weren't in the tent when he was, when they started announcing these things. And some of them were saying, yeah, they had broadcasts, they had systems like that. And you can look up on Twitter when their runners were saying that early in the morning. But Alistair revealed to me basically that during the time he was in the tent, there were coaches and people that were really serious and preparing. The run-of-the-mill uh, participant might not have been there at that time. So Alistair was in an interesting, uh, advantageous position to where he was kind of ahead of the marathon as a coach, and he was operating in, in a very serious uh, level, getting there very early in the morning, so he was able to hear this. I've heard that within the first two hours of the explosion, though, that some radio broadcasts were saying that it is some type of drill or something like that. I haven't been able to get a hold of those, but I've been getting a lot of news tips about that. But also, consider the fact that there's only two possibilities here. Number one, Alistair and other runners are completely fabricating this, and they're all crazy, right? Uh, even though he's a well-respected coach that's been to hundreds of marathons and has never said anything like this before and isn't trying to stir up any controversy. He's not a conspiracy theorist, as you might say. He's a perfectly normal guy, and I spoke to him on the phone personally, so I would know that. Number two, the, only, the other option is that the police commissioner is not telling the truth about the intelligence, or that, for whatever reason, the government is lying. Now, if we look at the motives behind these situations, why would Alistair lie about this as well as the other runners? They have absolutely no motivation whatsoever. In fact, if you note on that call, Alistair actually said that he wanted increased security at these marathons. So he's not actually, uh, you know, what you call a conspiracy theorist who's against the government. In fact, he was calling for more government security, which we, uh, I at least, completely disagree with. Yeah, so he, this is, he buys into that. You get with, you know, more uh, tyranny, you will get security, <laughs> as, as they say, or as we like to say. Exactly. So yeah. this guy is not some kook. You know, um, he just genuinely wants the message out there. He has no motivations besides getting the truth out there. And, you know, speaking with him, he feels completely backstabbed by the media because they basically say the only argument they have is that it's a conspiracy theory. They don't want to talk about the facts and think about how de uh, just ruined our truth uh, level of information is. If we can't even get the uh, simple fact that there was a drill that morning, can you imagine what else they're not telling us about this entire event? Exactly. And it's going to come out eventually. Somebody's going to look on their phone because everybody's going to go to where the, the explosion happened. If you're saying this was two or three hours before the race even started, somebody's got that video somewhere and it's going to appear. It's just people having to go through all their stuff, look at it. Everybody's putting up the stuff from the explosion because that's what the authorities are calling for. 
And um, eventually, I think we're going to find those little bits, and you'll be able to hear, this is only a drill. This is only a drill. And then what are they going to say? And then what's their, well, you know, how can they cover up that lie with another lie, saying, well, we had a drill, but it was for other things. You know, we were, we were drilling, uh, maybe we need to get more Gatorade out to the runners. You know, I mean, there's just no conceivable way they could back down from this. And, you know, we've basically blown the issue out in the open. You know, so that's pretty good. Now, today we released um, a bunch of these photos uh, that, that Paul Watson found on 4chan. And you guys can start pulling those up. Uh, Boston bombing culprits identified. It shows a guy who definitely looks like he could be turned into a patsy. He's got a, uh, he, he, he looks like he's wearing a robe with a, a red shirt and a, a blue kind of, I don't know, pullover jacket. And then it shows some other military looking guys one of which is wearing a hat with a skull on it. And you were telling me earlier that that is a, a, the insignia, in addition to being a Navy SEAL insignia, it's also that of a, of a private security firm. That's right. I believe that those military-looking people were part of a private security firm called uh, Kraft. And if you go to, it's called Kraft International. If you go to the website, thecraft.com, you can scroll down and click About Us. And then when you scroll down a little bit more, you'll see Chris Kyle in one of those photos. But you'll also note that at the top of the tab, a little thumbnail exists that is the exact Punisher skull that's on the hat of the uh, military guy. Also, you'll see the picture of Chris Kyle, who is the founder of Kraft, the private military force similar to Blackwater or Z. And you'll see uh, Chris Kyle sitting there with his sniper and the Punisher symbol on his hat. And it's a black hat with the white Punisher symbol. And he's wearing not only just the hat with the same exact symbol, but he's wearing those khaki-style military pants with the exact same boots and a black shirt. If you compare that to the photos of the military people in the Boston Marathon, not only are they wearing the exact same hat, the exact same pants, boots, but they're wearing a black jacket. And it appears that they're likely hired from Kraft International by, I guess, the Boston government, because they're also seen afterwards assisting with uh, some of the uh, survivors and stuff like that, the injured and everything like that. So I don't know why private security is there. It just pushes it even further. They've got bomb squads, bomb sniffing dogs, private security that's similar to Blackwater, uh, rooftop snipers. What the heck? What's going on? Well, that would be interesting to confirm. And we definitely need to get confirmation on that. Were there private security firms? Was the private security firm started by Chris Kyle actually their craft, like you say? And what would be even more interesting is Chris Kyle was killed just a month and a half ago. Did he even know about this? Is that a possibility? I mean, the, you know, I'm just, just hearing you talk about this, that's starting to go through my head. Did he know about this operation, want to stand down, and he was told, you know, no, essentially. I mean, what happened there? That's an interesting question to propose. And couldn't they get a different private security company? I mean, why does it have to be linked to Chris Kyle, who recently just died? I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely weird. They, if you go on the site, The Craft, and read about it, they train everything from master snipers to uh, different law enforcement. You can click the law enforcement tab that I'm on right now. The law enforcement sniper course, uh, team leader snipers. They have everything. I mean, this is, this is maybe even crazier than Blackwater. I don't know, but if they're there, if this is if this is truly craft people, it would it would put a whole new level on this story and make it really kind of come together in some ways. I mean, something they must have suspected a major threat. Well, that, they're hiring that it. would definitely be something to confirm. There's the patch right there and their logo. It looks like it's got a crosshair in one of the eyes of the skull. Uh, and you scroll down, and, and there's the picture of Chris Kyle. And we actually start off our. Uh, our article it does have a picture of Chris Kyle, and then it goes into all these other guys. You can see what he's wearing and what they're wearing. And um, wow, I'm just looking at the images now. That skull yeah. is everywhere. That skull's everywhere. That skull, and it's not it, like they're trying to hide it. It's not like a common thing either. I yeah. mean, you don't just go out and wear a SEAL, SEAL team skull. You'll, you'll get beat, you know? I mean, if a real, if a real SEAL member or if Kraft saw you, I mean, they, they look like military. They're wearing a wire, you know? Yeah. They're not just random people, like, thinking they're cool wearing a Punisher sign. They're wearing a wire. It's very, very obvious that they're some type of military people. And, but speaking of the pictures on, info, on Infowars.com right now with the Boston uh, article, go down to the one that says bag and no bag with that guy with the white hat and the black shirt or jacket and the backpack. 
Oh, where the bulge, you can see the bulge in the backpack? Correct. Yeah. Now, if we look at the CBS report, which is the latest one that's available on Drudge right now, it says that the suspect, whether or not they're in custody or not, doesn't, and it's not really sure, but it's a white male wearing mm -hmm. a white baseball cap that at the time was on backwards in uh, Lord and & Taylor, and a black jacket. So No, no mention of me, a backpack. No mention of a backpack. But to me, that would be the most convincing of the photos as to who the suspect may be. I'm not saying it is, right. but it looks pretty much on target with what they're saying. And in the second photo, he could be carrying the backpack as his hands are kind of together, but if he's not, then that would mean that he um, got rid of the backpack somewhere else. And that could be an explosive. And then also, look how he's looking away. Yeah. Everyone else, what everyone else is looking at is the race. Right. He's just kind of dazed off, like looking away. And you know, this is totally speculation, but it looks like you know, if if it were this this kind of guy, this would be the look of someone on um, antidepressants. Well, and if you scroll down even further, you go to this guy that that to me looks like. If anyone would be a patsy, this is casting 101 of a patsy. He's got a kind of a beard. Doesn't really look interested in what's going on, kind of hunched over. Um, yeah. Looks like he's wearing a bathrobe, but I think it's just like an, an older kind of fleece jacket. I and mean, these images, yeah, th these have been around since last night. And yeah. actually, what's funny is me and Mike Adams were talking about this at about 9 a.m. today. And I sent him this picture with the bearded guy. Uh, not that exact one, but the one with the straps, the, the um, gray straps. And I said, well, look at that. You know, if there is there anyone that the mainstream media's wet dream would oh, be yeah. as the suspect, it's that guy. Not yeah. only is he white, you know, looks like a typical conservative, a little bit of a beer belly, you know, average American, but he looks, he just absolutely looks like a conservative gun owner. Yeah. And they could easily say, oh, you know, uh, the, the gunpowder, the black powder, everything, they could, they could demonize him to no end. And we don't know this for sure. These are just the no, no, photos no. that were posted on 4chan. Uh, they're the ones that they circled. They're looking at the backpacks, comparing them. You know, so we don't know for sure. We're still going through this. I mean, less than, uh, you know, we're just going on 48 hours now from this event, which I think it's amazing that we've gotten this much information so quickly, you know, with the help of all these sites out there and other investigators and people looking at the uh, the police, uh, there's a guy that always downslo downloads the, um, the, the, uh, the scanner footage. Scanner. Yeah, and puts it up online for people to hear. So there's all this information out there that people are going through and looking at. I mean, believe me, the, there's already crazy stuff where they supposedly showed a, a photo of, of the principal who died at Sandy Hook saying she was one of the victims. Yeah. You know, I mean, and it's like, whoa, what, what are, where are they getting all this information? It's just coming out. So quickly, but you know, I think it's good that we posted these pictures at least so they're out there. And it, it looks like, from the time CNN said that they had a suspect, we posted these pictures, and all of a sudden CNN said, "No, we don't have a suspect. We don't have a suspect." All happening in real time. That's right. And you know, it's not it's not a bad thing to talk about what what it looks like, what the situation looks like, so we can get an understanding. We can start issuing predictions that most likely, uh, you know, Alex was on air the other day, and we, I've talked about this with Mike Adams and others as well. It was looking like the uh, Saudi man, the Saudi man, however it's pronounced, was going to be the suspect. Right. right. And then they said that's fake. Yeah. But Alex was saying from day one that it's going to be a white conservative, or speculating, you know, it's, it's likely going to be a white yeah. conservative. And then Salon says that, you know, he basically dreams at night about white men going to jail. And so now look, they're pinning it again on a white man, even though it looked like the odds were against them. It's also, by the way, the pressure cooker bomb is similar in design to Afghanistan-based IEDs. So it's actually a Middle Eastern-styled weapon. So if anything, if we were looking at this blindly, we would say it's most likely from someone from the Middle East, right? But not the media. Unless it's a returning veteran then you know, who's been in Afghanistan and learned the ways of the Afghanis and, and, and their IED making. And that's true. And the CNN analyst, he immediately was like, oh, well, if it's an amateur bomb, it has to be a white conservative. Uh, extreme right-wing conservative but you know it's 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 immediately pinned on uh, the right-wing conservatives for an agenda no question wow well I think your uh, your interview with Alistair Stevenson is bringing up more questions that we have it's not answering more because now you know there seems like there was definitely a drill going on he heard the the loudspeakers other runners that he talked to heard it 
he saw the bomb sniffing dogs everywhere that we were just showing pictures of bomb sniffing dogs that were there and you know they supposedly they had the biggest police presence there ever um, 400 federal, 1,000, um, and 400 of these federal could have been some of these uh, hired private security. We it don't know that. Kraft. Yeah, we don't know that. That would be interesting to find out if if uh, Kraft or other security firms were in on this in a, in a private security level working for the federal government. Because they do use these guys all over the world for other missions. You know, we can't just live in peace. We have to have this perpetual... Uh, terror threat coming at us, so we have to have increased security, so we have less rights. That's where it always goes to less rights, more security, which means a more powerful centralized government that is accountable to no one. So, with that, we're going to leave you now. If you get any more information, you know, send it our way. We'll post it, and uh, we'll keep looking at this as it continues. Thank you, Anthony Gucciardi from Natural Society. Give me your website real quick. Well, my new website actually is storyleak.com, which is where the Alistair interview is and everything like that. I've been breaking down uh, gun rights and everything from the Boston Marathon. So thanks a lot for having me. All right, storyleak.com. We got naturalsociety.com. I was actually talking to Anthony before the interview, and he was saying, you know, I had to start a new site just because, you know, health is important, but if we don't have our freedoms, it doesn't matter if we have our health. And he's right, you know. And that's going to do it for us today. Be sure you tune in tomorrow. We're still running that free stream. I imagine we're going to run it till the end of the week, and you can go to there. Go see that at uh, Infowars.com. Right in the top right, there's a Listen Live link. Or if you go to Infowars.com forward slash listen. So be sure and take advantage of that and become a member of Prison Planet TV if you haven't done so. It's PrisonPlanet.tv, and you can get a $5.95 per month membership. And you can also share the password with up to... 10 of your other friends, and you can all be on at the same time watching the shows, watching the movies, downloading the books, downloading the movies. Basically, anything you can do right now to get the word out is of utmost of importance. And with that, we'll see you tomorrow. This is InfoWars Nightly News, and I'm Rob Dew.